a new image has been found. Look at that, in all of its marvelous glory. I'll give you a second to enjoy it. Embrace it. Alright, moving on. But it will be looked into deeper here in a minute or so. 40 years ago, Britt Allcroft and her team would create a pilot pitch episode for Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends titled Down the Mine, based on the railway series story of the same name written by Reverend Wilbert Audrey. Today, however, barely anyone outside of the intended team has seen the pilot, and with very few visuals to work with, we can only imagine what it was like from the accounts of people who worked on it and the production material we have available to us today. Three years ago, I made a video covering my dive into the topic, and since then, tons of information has come out that contradicts and debunks a lot of what was said. To fix any and all confusion, I'll be going over everything that I talked about, correcting that, and going over stuff that I found after my video, and of course, elaborating on this photo. Look, there it is again! So, with that being said, sit back, relax, grab a snack, drink some water, and get cozy, because today, we're talking about the new image and updates to the Down the Mine pilot. I'm gonna zip through this little rundown so we can get to all the juicy stuff. Here's the order we're gonna do it in, and hopefully I remember to do video chapters. First, we have a brief rundown of the pilot and its history, and I mean brief. If you need a better rundown, including a bunch of history about our good friend Thomas, maybe check out my first video if you want. That has extensive background about the pilot. Just be careful though, because some information from that is outdated, which we'll talk about and correct in this video. Next. We're going to be discussing the image in its entirety. This includes analyzing it, talking about the theories behind the production of it, and speculating about its existence. Then we'll talk about the misconceptions with my last video, as previously mentioned. After that, we're going to talk about this really cool production manual for the pilot that surfaced after my first video's release. And finally, I've got a section where I try to debunk this image since there's no confirmation of it coming from an official production. For example, this didn't come directly from Clearwater or the staff, it came from an anonymous source. Before we start though, a quick disclaimer that I will mention some anonymous individuals, alleged gatekeeping within the fandom, and allegations about unnamed people. It's important that we dive into this knowing that this is all allegations within the community, and I'm looking into this information with an unbiased demeanor. That being said, I will refer to such things as alleged when they come up. On a lighter note, I would like to thank my friend Click Clack Track for helping with the search and this video. An amazing guy who seriously knows so much about the pilot and its production, and I seriously appreciate everything that he's done for the search. With that being said, let's begin this quick and brief rundown. The 80s were a great time to be a Railway Series fan, specifically 1983. Christopher Audrey had published the newest Railway Series story after his father officially retired from the series. Really Useful Engines is the 27th book in the Railway Series, published on September 12, 1983. This was the return to the Railway Series. At the same time as this book's release, filmmaker Britt Allcroft was working on adapting the Railway Series books into a TV series using live-action models. Her work succeeded two failed attempts to adapt the series, one by the BBC in 1953 and the other by Andrew Lloyd Webber in the 1970s. She approached filmmaker David Mitten to have directed, and thus made history. Shot at Clearwater Studios in London, the pilot produced for the series focused around the Railway Series story Down the Mine from the 8th book of the Railway Series, Gordon the Big Engine. The 1983 pilot was never shown to the public and only a few investors who were interested in picking up the series were shown the episode to sell them on the potential of the series. After the series was greenlit, the episode was reshot again for the finalized show and fell deeper between the cracks. The pilot was never released, never shown, and all we have now are props, a script, production material, and some clips that were recycled into the final episode. Until this image was sent to me by an anonymous source. Wow. Isn't she beautiful? Obviously, the first thing I had to do was verify the legitimacy of the photo. If you don't know, the Thomas fandom is super talented at making image edits. Like, they're outstanding. Much to my satisfaction, it was found to not be doctored. A few photo forensic sites found issues with it, but it's only because this is a scan of a pre-existing image. Let me explain. If you've seen Nick Starwin's video about the missing coach and the found stills from that, then you'll know that each of those were uh, stills on individual film that was later scanned into a digital image, thus explaining the low quality of them, the size, etc, etc. The anonymous source who sent the photo alleges that a group within the fandom has acquired many of these stills over a decade ago and had been sharing them around privately within their inner circle. Uh, granted, these are all uh, allegations, you know. Yeah. Click Clack Track believes that the stills came from the same time as when Mattel brought out Hit Entertainment in 2012. So, 
let's analyze this picture. To start, we have Thomas going under the bridge, as seen in the intro, however the set is very different. The signal box is on the left instead of the right, and you can tell it's not flipped because the stairwell is actually visible. We have a more broad view of the bridge, where the classic boy is seen standing with his bike. The big tree is on the right this time instead of the left, and you can see the edge of the set on both sides. Thomas's model looks different, a bit more bulky and blocky, and the anonymous source believes this to be him wearing a prototype face, and you know, the pilot model was a lot more blocky, you can see that in the finalized episode. The coloring is very bland and dull, it honestly looks like how you'd expect it to look, you know, early 80s pilot. You can see a signal man on the signal box stairs and what appear to be livestock or rocks, something alongside the track in the field. See the face? There's a belief that that is a prototype. The prototype face theory is pretty interesting, so let's delve into that for a second. There's speculation that this is a prototype face for Thomas used in the pilot exclusively, as we know now from employees that the models used in the pilot would actually leak steam from their eyes. It's debated if the pilot face is actually a prototype face that was scrapped after the pilot, or if the model itself was scrapped and the face we see in the pilot is actually the smug Thomas face we see in the show. Personally, I can't really decide. On one hand, Gordon's pilot model has a completely different face in all the images we've seen. You know, it's pretty interesting that we haven't seen a lot of that model, but on the other hand, only Gordon's face is confirmed to be different. Thomas's expression seen in the footage from the finalized cut doesn't vary too much from the finalized show. I don't think it would make too much sense for them to make a whole set of new emotions for Thomas's face. This is all backed up by the production log stating that there were different faces intended to be used for each engine, as to mirror the illustrations. The log actually details what page of the book each face is featured on, so that's kind of neat. Granted though, uh, my devil's advocate argument kind of falls apart when you take into account that they still needed to produce the faces for the models once they got approval to start the series. You know, why not go back and remake the Thomas expressions? They, they did that with Gordon. I don't know. Just fun stuff to speculate on. Something important from the production log is that it states under the notes, angles illustrated in the book are not camera angles, with emphasis on that not part, it's underlined. The production log states that the set for Thomas traveling under the bridge is supposed to have a beach to the right of the screen. This is similar to the illustration, however, due to this tree on the right, we don't have a great look at what's over there. However, I do believe I do see some sort of sand to the right, there's kind of like a yellow sandish color so there's that but it also looks like the edge of the set being propped up on the side so there's that as well the signal box is on the wrong side of the set if this is what they were going for but you know that that's about it the bridge according to the log is supposed to have a yellow road and honestly i don't have anything to contradict this point it's weird they didn't go with that but We've never had this nice of a look at that bridge, so th there's my argument. There is, however, a note that the two tracks need to run off to the camera right, which it appears they are, as they start to curve very, very slightly the further back you go. The signal box is the most convincing piece of evidence, as it appears to have black spots where the parts of the stairwell connect, I guess they're like nails, which are not present in the final series. They are present, however, in this picture of the signal box the modeler took during the pilot's production. It's safe to say, that's our signal box. I reached out to mother Christopher Knowlton and assistant editor Andrea MacArthur to ask if this photograph jogged any sort of memories for them recording their work on the pilot. Both indeed confirmed that the photograph looked familiar, however neither were able to 100% confirm this is the pilot, and their reasoning for that is because it was 40 years ago, which, yeah, I don't blame them, that's a long time. Uh, for the first time in years though, we finally have new visual content of the Lost Down the Mine pilot. And the production side of this is crazier. I think it's time we correct some info from the last video. Firstly, Ringo Starr was not our narrator. I know that information came from Brit herself, but another source from the show who saw the pilot contests this claim. Enter Rick Sigelko. Rick worked on the Americanized version of the show Shining Time Station and claims that he watched the pilot as well to get the green light for Shining Time. Rick says something pretty unique, claiming that a woman's voice was actually the narrator. It's interesting that he notes no one specific. We can safely say that Allcroft wasn't the voice he heard, as he was already familiar with her from Shining Time, and would have just said, hey, uh, Britt Allcroft was the narrator. This means some unknown party voiced the pilot episode, and if we look at our production timeline, which we're about to be doing here in a second, there's no trace of when a temporary recording was planned to be made. 
unless you factor that in with after they finalize the script. Click Clack Track speculated that the narrator Rick is referring to is actually the assistant editor of the show, Andrea MacArthur, who was rumored to have done temporary recordings for the team to work with until Ringo completed his lines. I reached out to MacArthur not only about the legitimacy of the image, but also about her narrations. She replied with the following, I do remember, yes, can't swear to it as it was a long time ago, but yes, still looks familiar, and yes, I did all the temp voiceover. I think this goes to prove the very likely chance that Andrea was in fact the narrator to the pilot episode, as the studio likely couldn't get Ringo's star in to narrate the episode at the time. I mentioned in my original video that after speaking with Britt, she said that Mike O'Donnell and Junior Campbell did the score for the pilot. After reading through the production manual, there's no mention of the music production or score. There's no mention of Mike and Junior in the available production log, and the only mention I was able to find of music just states that there should be some sort of luck music, whatever that means, but they did prioritize sound effects, which I think is pretty good priority to really hammer in that these characters are in fact steam engines. My original video had a quite bit of flaws, but since then, discussion of the pilot has been going strong and it really helps get all the correct information out there. Seriously, the more people talk about it, the more the correct information comes out. I really want to thank everyone who helped me get the right information after the first video. It seriously means the world to me, you guys, and you guys all rock. Going into this video, I really wanted to not only push this new image, but also correct the misinformation I unintentionally spreaded with the last video. Anyways, it's time for the next part, uh, right before the conclusion and uh, Devil's Advocate, of course. For us to talk about, that being the production timeline and manual I've been using for the majority of this video. Seriously, this thing is the best. The production timeline we have comes from a 1982 Clearwater Guide that was leaked online some time ago. It details that the pilot was actually scheduled to be shot in April of 1983 and was set to be finished being shot by early May. The plans for the actual production, however, go even further back. In January, the first Perspex model of Thomas was set for discussion. What isn't generally known and isn't really detailed in this production log is that they originally tried recording on a smaller scale using different models. However, the final product wasn't satisfying. They scrapped that project altogether. The notes for January say that the discussion for Thomas's model was to be swift for them to start scaling the models. It was said that Ringo was supposed to record for the pilot in March. However, if there was a woman narrator, then it's likely that Ringo's schedule was confirmed conflicting with it at the time. Honestly, it looks like the pilot's production was pretty quick, starting filming tests and finalized shooting in April and completing the editorial front in May. It looks like it was done in a matter of weeks. It said that the production log that everything seen in the illustrations will be needed, and it looks like they were going for a recreation of the book. It can be assumed that still image revealed to us is actually this illustration from the book of Thomas going under the bridge, as you know mentioned earlier. <laughs> also available since the upload of my video is actually the full script of the pilot, which was a tad bit shorter dialogue-wise than the actual finalized episode. Included with that is the visual script of it. It's interesting that a lot of the written material, i.e. production log and script, were found before any new visuals were found for a 40-year-old pilot pitch. The script was a released alongside the production log in 2022, and man, it is just wonderful. It's really crazy to think that the script was set to be finalized only a month after the draft was written up, and storyboarding would begin not even a second after. You know, for the sake of this video, I've been heavily relying on what was said in this document, and to be completely honest, I think there's a lot of accuracy to what was written in it. And we're not even talking about how this lines up perfectly with the visual script written for the episode as well. Seriously, the production of the pilot with the first entire season was a very intricate process. It took a lot of focus and hard work to make the best possible product, as is the case with most forms of art. The team at Clearwater working on this pilot knew what they were doing, and they seriously need to be applauded for their work. They're all wonderful people and artists. Well, on to the final part before the conclusion, and I send you guys all home. Welcome to the part where I try to play devil's advocate to debunk this image. Let's begin, shall we? Our main objection with this section is to see if we can possibly debunk this image, starting by reverse image searching to see if this was anywhere online prior to this video. Results have yielded nothing. So, let's analyze the objects of the image, again, specifically, the bridge. The production guide says the road should be yellow, but here in the picture, it's pink. I went ahead and took a look at unique scenes in the classic series that feature this bridge. This involved overlaying images from these scenes on top of our new image. 
I had four episodes to examine scenes from Thomas in Trouble, which the image did not match. Whistles and sneezes didn't match. Thomas and the guard couldn't match because the boy is waving with his arm in the image and the bridge has a wider view. Edward and Gordon did not match because only half the bridge is shown. It's important to note that the image actually shows two large like, bumps on the, on the top of the bridge. I'm not an architect, so I don't know what they're called. Every shot we have in the early series only shows one of these bumps. And I, I guess I'll circle them on screen when I'm editing this. I don't know. So it's safe to say that this bridge isn't edited out of any other episode. But what about the other assets? Well, this boy isn't ever shown waving. Certainly not on this bridge, of course. The signal box down there has those little dots I mentioned earlier. Thomas is actually not really ever shown at this angle. What about all the pixels? Could it be a sign of editing? Or a sign that this is just a really bad scan? That I really don't know, but all assets in this image couldn't be taken from pre-existing scenes or images. The bridge, the signal box, even the sky, all legit assets. This photo is real. So yeah, a mysterious anonymous individual sent me a strange screenshot of an unreleased pilot episode not seen for 40 years. That's pretty cool. Classic Lost Media. When the show first aired in 1984, I didn't even exist yet. I wasn't even a thought. But due to the major success of the show in the books, I grew up with almost everything Thomas right up until I discovered Lego. My search for the pilot is a very love-hate one, where I can't really make too much progress without dipping my toes into the allegations of gatekeeping and underground Thomas groups, so this video was definitely a doozy trying to avoid all that. There isn't too much substantial evidence to the gatekeeping claims that actually influences the search, you know, like getting us closer to finding it. You know, there are tons of screenshots out there making these claims, but I decided not to get into that because that's not really where our interest should be at. When I was first sent this image, I couldn't believe my eyes. I had to go down every little avenue to ensure that this was in fact not a doctored image. This is one of those things where if it, this ends up being fake and I was duped, I will absolutely take this video down and issue a public apology, but I'm so confident it's legit. It literally matches up with what was said in the draft visual script. You guys already know how I love to talk about lost media that's related to my childhood, and this topic is no different. I'm so happy I got to come back to talk about this pilot again, and hopefully I'll get to do it again in the future when it's finally found and we can all celebrate. Until then, I will be posting this image around. You can find it on my Twitter, that's in the description below. It'll float around there for a bit, find its way into some wikis, discords, this thing will be all over. If you enjoyed this video today, please leave a like and tell me what you think in the comments below. If you want to see more of my content, consider subscribing, it's free, and you can click that bell icon to be notified of my next upload. Want to support me on a different level? I have a Patreon where you can become a member and have your name featured at the end of the video, and receive weekly exclusive behind the scenes updates on videos before they're release. As always guys, it's been a blast and I will see you all next time. Take care of yourselves. Peace!